September 11th, a date that will immediately bring to mind images and emotions and thoughts, especially to those who live through it. It's a day remembered by three numbers, 9-11. In fact, if you mention 9-11, everyone knows what you're talking about. It's a day remembered so distinctly by people that they can recall where they were when they received the news or where they were when they watched the towers come down or the planes crash. This happened 19 years ago. I can tell you exactly where I was. I was at uh, the office building of the church where I was serving at that time in the Poconos, right next to the church. I was standing outside the secretary's office when we received word. I can tell you some of the things that went through my mind, uh, uh, the sadness, the grief, horror, anger, helplessness, and sickness actually sick to my stomach. And I still feel some of those same uh, emotions as I, as I think about that even today, almost 20 years later. I also have a deep sense of gratitude for the many who risked their lives and many who actually gave their lives to help rescue people. And I'm reminded of the ongoing need to pray for our country during turbulent times. And we certainly are experiencing those today. A year ago, I read a book by a sports journalist who married a widow of a man who died on 9-11. They had a they had a one year old son, and this sports journalist wanted to make sure that this boy grew up knowing about his father. Nine eleven affected so many many relationships, and in the midst of that horrible event. We're reminded of the brevity of life, that we're only guaranteed the very moment that we're in right now. We're reminded of the value of relationships. And we've been in the midst of a series, Me to We, which concentrates on relationships, that God has made us to be connected with him and with one another. And this is leading up to the launch of our home groups that we hope provides the connection and helps with that connection with, with God and with one another. We began with this idea that there's been a great disconnect in our relationship with God. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. And that sin passed down to each one of us in the way of us having a sin nature. And we're also described as those who sin as well on our own decisions. So therefore, we're sinners by birth and we're sinners by choice. And it's caused a great disconnect. And the only reconnection is through Jesus Christ. That you and I can't earn or deserve God's forgiveness. In fact, we are described as being God's enemies being under his wrath, being under his condemnation. And our only hope is what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. That God the Father sent God the Son to live and die and rise again for our sin. That we could be reconnected with God. And how does that happen? That happens when we admit our sin, repent of our sin, turn from our sin, and turn to God for his forgiveness, seek his forgiveness available only through the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we have a reconnection with God. And Jesus Christ 
changes everything. And this reconnection is based upon what God has done, not what we have done. But not only have we been created for a relationship with God, we've been created for a relationship with one another. But it starts with our relationship with God. That needs to be right uh, before we can have a right relationship with one another. And last week we exposed and explored this idea of uh, relationship with one another. And, and what do we mean by that? And we looked at the beginning of the early church that as they met together, there were certain things that happened and uh, certainly they uh, studied the word of God together. Uh, they had fellowship together. They broke bread together and they prayed together. And some of the uh, results that happened, uh, we explored using the word acts. The letter A, they, they were in awe of God. They saw God doing amazing things uh, through the apostles. And God continues to do amazing things. He continues to be the God of the miraculous. In fact, the salvation of any one of us is a miracle. And then the letter C, we explored this idea of caring for one another. That as the body gathered together, the church, they saw needs that each other had because they got to know each other in a deeper level. And they even were willing to sell their possessions to take care of those needs. They cared for one another. And certainly one of our goals in these home groups is that we would get to know each other better and realize the needs of one another and be able to care for one another. And then the letter T is time. They took time for each other. They spent time together. It says they met daily in the temple courts and they met in homes. And so we want to make time with one another a priority as well. And then the letter S is salvation. That they saw people come to faith in Jesus as they met together. And this happened after uh, 3,000 people came, came to faith in Christ when Peter preached. So God was continuing to work. It didn't stop at the 3,000 coming to faith, but daily people were coming to faith in Jesus Christ. And this past week, we encouraged and challenged you to do the one another's of Scripture. And there are many, many, many of them. And hopefully uh, you've been able to do those. And we want to encourage you to have that be an ongoing thing as well. And this week, this Sunday, as we gather, we want to think about this question. What about those? Who have yet to come to faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus, before his ascension, said to his closest followers, he gave them this command, make disciples, make committed followers of me. And we want to see that happen in these home groups, that we would be a body of believers that are disciple-making disciples. And so our faith is reproduced in the life of others, that we see people come to faith in Jesus. And we believe that through these home groups, uh, we will see this happen and that God wants to see this happen. And so as we gather together this Sunday, I want to encourage you to look at the passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 21 as we look to answer some questions. What is our passion? What should our passion be as believers? What is our priority as believers? And what is our purpose here as believers? So take some time in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 21. And again, we gather together the early service at 8 a.m. inside and 1030 service outside. Uh, with the same protocols we've had. But uh, for those who, who can't make it, you're not feeling well, or somebody in your house is sick, or you have other challenges, uh, we encourage you to watch online or listen uh, via the radio station WPGM. And as I close today, I want to ask you, where are you, where are you at in your relationship with Jesus Christ? Have you been reconnected? The only reconnection is when we admit our sin, repent of it, turn from it, and seek God's forgiveness available 
only through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when we come to faith in Christ, he changes everything. And we're to be disciple-making disciples. May you have a blessed day. And may we continue to pray for our country. And may we look forward to gathering together again this weekend.